talk today about privacy integrated computing. I'm uh, Morty Young uh, from Google. Uh, I'm also at Columbia University, but this will represent works uh, done at Google by me and by others. So uh, computing in the last 50 years or so um, has become closer to humanity. Uh, one, uh, one example is Doug Engelbar Engelbart, who said uh, boosting mankind's capacity for coping with complex, urgent problems is uh, the goal of computing. And another thing he said is augmenting society's collective IQ. So helping humanity is indeed a fundamental uh, role of uh, computer science and information technology. It's one of the challenges. And indeed, we see that over the years, uh, humans and computers become closer and closer. The PC revolution, which took all the desktop functions, put them in the desktop computer, and the internet, you, you, can, you can see it as global reach, availability of news, mail, social interaction, e-commerce, publishing, blogs, and so on. And then you see mobile, where you see uh, that it's, uh, it's uh, at any time available uh, uh, to the user, anywhere it goes, and it has all the other uh, more intimate functions of wallet, payments, maps, rides, and so on. And then you see cloud, where you have available resources as you need them, and internet of things as devices go around and, and gives, you, gives you augmented uh, 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 atmosphere. So uh, computing is central to human reality and uh, with it we are getting computer gets computing gets closer to real world and I will quote another uh, famous uh, person here Yogi Berra who said if the world were perfect it wouldn't be. And he said it even without understanding self-reference. So uh, in particular, what I want to say is that uh, as individual humans are being saved by computing, their data necessarily is being used by the computation. And here is the responsibility that this implies. It implies the need to assure the privacy of that human. That whose data is being used. And this is the responsibility of computing. So what I advocate today is uh, perhaps an, an extended notion of uh, responsible uh, computing. Uh, I call it privacy integrated computing. Its thesis is that privacy should be built in wherever and whenever possible. And, uh, and this is a little bit beyond privacy by design. It should be a goal and beyond privacy by legal requirement. It should be an integral part of computing where, where, when computer, computing uh, deals with data coming from humans and in order to serve them. And uh, I call it privacy integrated computing because I see it as part of computer science and information technology. And we may not get them immediately. We may have problems. We are, we are having problems, of course. We need to iterate to learn in order to know how to do it right and how to approach uh, this notion. And the good news is that we starting to realize this notion in bits and pieces here and there. And I will demonstrate it uh, by four examples from our working group. So uh, the first example is COVID-19 community mobility reports. Uh, the subtitle of this work, which uh, is responsibilities, responsibly supporting the public health response. And the idea is we have location history of users. We know where they are going. So we 
can try to use this data, but we must integrate privacy. So this is a project by the Safety Engineering Group in, in Google. And they produce uh, uh, reports on uh, countrywide and community-wide movements, where people have been, and what has been happening. We have this uh, mobile geodata, and we can generate these reports. Uh, however, these reports do not share data about individuals, location, mo movement, or contacts. The insights are created in in an aggregated mode, anonymized mode. And additional step were taken to randomize it in a differential privacy uh, setting to ensure no uh, re-identification of individuals. The entire process was built bottom up with privacy as a goal. And uh, you get these reports, but they are based on fundamental uh, DP library, higher level framework where SQL queries with differential privacy were, was integrated and generating uh, outputs, which are also differentially pri private. It is perhaps the first large scale geo uh, oriented uh, project in which uh, privacy, in a particular differential privacy, was taken care of from the start. It was obvious it has to be done like this, and it was part of what was needed to be computed. This was the first example. The second example is of the last few years, uh, secure computing protocols in business, and this is part of the private computing uh, group, and I was involved in this, and this is about moving uh, theoretical notions, theoretical protocols into practice in order to take care of privacy. And secure computing, again, we need it. Internet, for example, Internet e-business is a multi-company corporation. They have users' data they are the custodians of, and they don't want to share it. And they, are, they need to do it, of course, cloud, of host user data, and doesn't need to, to know it and see it, and so on. In 40 years, we have been having these crypto protocols that have been developed from the late 70s, and early, early 80s, and then mid 80s, and it, it became a very active field of theoretical cryptography. And uh, what we created, a complete solution of uh, uh, in a problem that we call intersection SAM, intersection SAM, that uh, combining a commutative function based uh, uh, private set intersection with a blinded SAM to, to solve various uh, business problems with uh, required performance. So the first part is the users have uh, community functions. They take their sets, they send it to each other, they encrypt it and re-encrypt it, and the doubly encrypted two sets and permuted, they can find intersection, and then they can find that they take the data the, that is associated with elements in the intersection and further perform uh, operations on it and and find, for example, the sum of those elements associated with members of the intersection. So they, you can find the, the size of the intersection, which is an important parameter for uh, business analysis, and the sum uh, spent by members of the intersection. So this, uh, with privacy from the start, uh, have been deployed and have been solving problems like analytics of e-commerce between uh, two different commercial entities, as I said. It's the base for the password checking uh, protocol in which users can check if their password is in a compromised list without uh, divulging their password. It has been open sourced as join and compute. Uh, Facebook, for example, extended it to find the uh, bridge identities between uh, elements. 
It was extended in various ways. It was extended in, against ma malicious parties uh, recently. And uh, uh, finally, after eight years or so of working on it, this year we also have two publications in the area. The basic solutions, which explains a lot of the business and the basic uh, Honest but Curious, which is going to be in Euro security and privacy, and a two side malicious solution, and that is going to be in crypto this year. So, this is the second example. And now to example number three, which I call it stocking free tracking in Internet of Things. And in particular, it's it is Ediston, which is ephemeral ID, which is a format of identifying uh, beacons, privacy solution for BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy Beacons. And uh, this was deployed and open sourced as well. And what is that, what are those beacons? Beacons are generic infrastructures on top of which you can build applications. So these are simple devices, battery powered, that can put in things or in the physical world, and they essentially broadcast their existence and maybe some other information. It's easy to install and they are supposed to give you uh, notions like proximity to a place or advertise a place when you arrive into a place where your mobile gets the signal from the beacon. So the canonical example for beacon is the suitcase. So you put your beacon in a suitcase. It can alert you when you lose your, your luggage. You suddenly don't get the regular signals. It can alert you in the airport where your suitcase is coming off the car, on the carousel, that it's there. You can look for it. And the requirement is also if your suitcase is lost, maybe it went to another or airport that you will get the signals nevertheless. This is a global function. And this is the hardest one to, to fulfill. And we wanted to do it with uh, privacy. And the engineering team said, no, it's impossible because you have broadcast, you have encryption, you can do encryption, but the owner of the, uh, of the uh, beacon of the suitcase may be in another airport and it's out of reach. So you cannot, if you, if you send private signals, who knows how to get there? So it doesn't enable privacy and authentication to co coexist with uh, uh, global span of the problem. So, you know, when the engineer said, it's, when, when the engineers, say that uh, these things are impossible. This means that it's very interesting and we have to solve it. So we came up with the ephemeral ID solution to, to this problem. We have a master key in the device that encrypts the time and based on it generates uh, the ephemeral ID that is for this time and it broadcasts it. Maybe it broadcasts other things, but this being broadcast. And of course, if the owner is in the local area, it can read it, it, it shares the key, and it can decrypt it, and know what, that it is really coming from its big one. But when it's global, we have to do other things. And the solution is that the nearby mobile devices will forward these undecryptable uh, ephemeral IDs to the cloud. The cloud will have uh, routing elements, uh, trusted elements, that will mediate between the IDs and ephemeral IDs. So it reads the ephemeral IDs. It has means to decrypt it, to reveal the ID, to reveal the ID, to do it. Uh, in high volume and recognize that this ID belongs to certain mobile. This is a trust element and it performs the routing. So now you can build applications that you usually can build on identities, on these ephemeral identities, where the ephemeral identities are only revealed to the trusted element in the cloud that does the routing 
and uh, and that's it. And and it's privacy. It's in, and it's a privacy solution otherwise to the rest of the ecosystem, to uh, anybody who listens. So this solves this 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 is the solution of example three. I hope you got some of it. And now I'm going to talk about more more recent work, example four, which is the Apple Google exposure notification, which meant to using technology to help public health authorities to fight the spread of COVID-19. So I'm not going to describe it all, but just as I did with the other solutions, just bits and pieces. So the pandemic versus the technologies. So here is the pandemic and we have cell phones. And cell phones already gave us online maps and services like Uber and mobile payments and so on. So what about health? Now everybody has everybody who has a smartphone may be able to use it for health. And then there is a very old uh, practice called contact tracing where somebody gets sick, you try to manually extract whom they met and then notify these people and check, check their health. And since we had the BLE project and invented the ephemeral ID for, as a layer of privacy, we already showed some possibilities to, to, to read broadcasts between devices. The questions, can, the questions that came to my mind was, can we do it? Can this help? in this uh, task that health authority uh, authorities perform, like contact tracing. And can they do it responsibly? And now it's also an interesting uh, exercise in computing because humanity status, we are not anymore uh, humans who use computers, but we are humans who use mobile smartphones. So what is the responsibility in this case? We, has new, we have new computational model, we have privacy concerns, we, we need to have high utility, and we have technology. So we have to combine all this and do something. So here is some personal uh, realizations that I had, some feedback. So privacy is important, no need to give it up for each problem. So if you say, oh, now today I fight a pandemic, uh, you, everybody has to give it up its privacy. So if you start uh, this way, then tomorrow there will be no privacy because there, there are many reasons that are urgent to various uh, groups, peoples, etc. Yet this problem is not pure, purely privacy, crypto and security problem because you need to really solve the problem and take into account many, many aspects. Performance, especially of the smartphones, is, is, a, is, is an issue. Usability is an issue. Battery power is an issue. Communication costs and constraints as well of BLE uh, communication. Usage penetration, server operation, development time, privacy, security, and safety, all these together come into mind and there are, there are obvious trade-offs. If I can do fancy computation, fancy privacy preserving computation, I may exhaust the battery. The people see that with the applications in their battery is uh, depleted fast, they're going to uh, erase the, the app. They're going to erase the app. The penetration is going to be less. The effectiveness, or the utility is going to be less. So there are constraints that are interrelated and there are trade-offs. So there was a need to do feasibility. We did, we did feasibilities, including feasibility of security and privacy and threats. And we needed to check various uh, designs and there are various problems. And uh, we noticed that someone's great idea may be awkward on, on this trade of uh, curves, curve when you take into account other considerations. And we explored numerous designs for pure privacy, from pure privacy one. For example, I did privacy preserving one based on the join and compute that I described before. Later on, a uh, group from Berkeley uh, had a paper that developed this idea even further. Uh, we did design based on just spreading the ephemeral IDs, uh, where we only revealed the IDs or hash of IDs or hash of keys. Eventually, 
uh, we went to this uh, reveal the encryption key of the day because this is the most compression of 144 identities, ephemeral identities that are produced during the day. So we can connect the identities of the days, and this is a privacy trade-off. We hurt privacy by revealing the keys rather than the individual IDs that were generated pseudo-randomly from this key, but we get a very concise uh, representation of all these keys. And this last option became the Google Apple uh, uh, Exposure Notification API. And this, uh, I, I go through it very briefly, it represents work by many, many people in the two companies, many engineers on many areas, technologies, just everybody with just good intentions, how to try to help health authorities. And it was nice that the ephemeral ID that was envisioned in, in, the, in the beacon domain as a layer for privacy is the key for uh, this solution and actually at the other solutions that, that were explored, including the privacy preserving. And the protocol is very simple. The API is have a key of a day. Every 10 minutes generate an ephemeral ID. You kind of see it as an encryption of the time by the key. And you broadcast this with your BLE uh, uh, communication. At the same time, you scan and read other IDs around, around you. If you are infected, there should be a procedure to report and then up, upload the keys of the last 14 days. Every day at the end of the day, download all published keys from the server and only keys of infected people are at the server. If somebody never gets infected, no information about it ever leaves the smartphone, but you download all the keys of all the infected people and then you uh, use the keys to regenerate the ephemeral IDs and check against your exposure. And then you see uh, to whom you were exposed and some physical characteristics of the exposure. And the hope is that combined using this API with this app combined with other procedures in the real world of the health authorities, this can be uh, helpful. So we need to understand issues are complex. The big picture is complex. This uh, API is only one tool. It required pro pro product experience to attempt to deploy health and epidemi epidemiological uh, advice and so on. There are many opinions. Many opinions uh, ignore certain threats and certain constraints. Maybe my own too. I had concerns. Not all of them may be uh, fulfilled because it's, uh, you live in a, in a world of uh, big trade-offs. Uh, but I noticed that some requests for better system, in fact, weaken security or weaken utility or will eventually, after you go through the derivation, that it will hurt performance, will cause people to get rid of the app, will reduce utility and will not be helpful. So humility is important in this area and much care. This is a new system and a new world. And especially when technologies talk to Policy people, the discussion should be need care. And many people uh, emphasize their expertise, but they don't realize that their expertise is just a little piece of the big puzzle. So hopefully governments and health authorities will know how to utilize uh, this API in a balanced way and not as some critics assume they are supposed to. Because users deserve safety, health, and privacy. And these are in trade-off here. And many issues exist in all examples and in all uh, solutions. And we chose a trade-off to the best of our technical and otherwise knowledge that we could do it. 
And remember, in responsible computing, first and foremost, you need to compute. So deployment is number one step in responsible computing. And I hope this, uh, uh, for example, gave you uh, bits and pieces about how privacy, how integrated privacy can be done with computing. Thank you very much.